rain comes and it's coming, let us hear the good news of salvation by Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us, neither is there any other name under heaven by which we must be saved. The only name, the only name that saves sinners is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. No other name, no other religion, no other philosophy. The whole purpose, the whole purpose of the eternal Son of God coming into this world was that he might pay the penalty to the justice of God. And the penalty was death. Man in time sinned. And so God, who is outside time, was willing to enter into time and pay the penalty for sin by his own son, our Lord Jesus Christ, making atonement for sin. We are told in the Jewish book of Leviticus that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And God said, and I have given it to you upon your altars, for it is the blood that maketh atonement for the soul. It is the blood, the blood that makes atonement for the soul. And so the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, was shed in time. God, God entered into time that through the blood of Jesus Christ, our sin, your sin, and my sin might be forgiven. I would like to ask a question. I would like to ask a question of our Mohammedan friends because there's a lot of contention up here week by week between Mohammedans and Christians. And the question that I would like to ask is this. If, if the law... If, Yes, for the if the law in our land is impartial, if it is impartial, let me ask you a question. Let me ask the police a question too. If, if a man who will not write gay logo on a cake, if a man will not write gay logo on a cake, to satisfy a customer who is a homosexual, then why should we not go to a halal butcher and demand two pork chops? But I did that. I did that in Shepherd's Bush. I went to a butcher who's meant to have a service to all the public, and I said, I want two pork chops. And he drove me out of the shop. Well, why? Why? Why if a homosexual complains of partiality against homosexuals? Because he will not have, the baker will not write some gay logo on the cake. Then why should, why should not the Mohammedans sell pork in the butchers? That's my question. Why should they be allowed to sell only lamb, only chicken, and only beef. And that's the question. If our law is impartial, then it should relate to all people. And so I am writing to the Prime Minister to make sure that all the halal shops sell pork, as well as beef and chicken. They are, they are required to sell the meat. If I, as a baker, cannot write on a cake some homosexual logo and therefore be incriminated for not doing so, then why should the halal shops not sell pork? I'm not saying I eat pork, but why should not a member of the British public, why should they not be able to go to the butcher, whether it be Muslim or British or whatever, why should they not be able to go and ask for a pork chop? That is my question. And so I thank God 
that the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ has made us free men and free women. And we attribute in this country, we attribute our civil and religious liberty to the Holy Bible. That's a really good tension Because in the gospel, our Lord Jesus Christ told us that whoever commits sin, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And the slave does not continue in the house forever. But the son continues forever. And I, and I'm sure all of you know what it is to be or have been slaves to sin. And Jesus Christ said, if the Son, the Son of God, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. So how are we made free from the penalty of sin? Only through the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ. And my contention is this, that God entered into time in the person of Jesus Christ to do what? To die. Why did he have to die? Because death was the penalty for sin. God said to our first parents, the soul that sins, it shall die. And so death came because of sin. And that is why it was necessary for the only begotten Son of God to take on our humanity and in that humanity to pay the penalty to God's justice. And he did that when he suffered in the sinner's place. And those of us who have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ have been made free. We are free men, free women. Where did the freedom come from? Did it come from our works? Was it our works as well as the work of Jesus Christ? No, it wasn't. It was the work of Jesus Christ alone that availed for sin. It was the work that Jesus Christ did in his coming into this world as man to die. If he had never become man, there would have been no substitutionary death for sin. But he was willing to suffer death upon the cross to be our saviour. And that's why this world now, under the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, under the authority of Jesus Christ, who is the governor of the nations, in Isaiah the prophet, we are told that when the Son of God would come, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government, the government of this world shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen. And Isaiah goes on to say, and of the increase of his government and of his peace there will be no end of the increase of the government and of the peace of jesus christ there will be no end and when people say in their different religions peace be upon you there is no peace our bible tells us there is no peace for the wicked the wicked are like the troubled sea that casts up mire and dirt. There is no peace, says my God, unto the wicked. But Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, Amen. made peace by the blood of his cross. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's say hallelujah, K. K. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the love of God. Amen. It takes away the sin of the world. And I would say to my Mohammedan friends, I would say, have you not just celebrated Eid Mubarak? Have you not just had your Eid Mubarak? And they would say yes. 
What did, what was the significance of Eid Mubarak? And many of them, they can't tell me. They just have a feast every year. But what, what was the significance of it? Well, there was a substitute made for Isaac, the son of Abraham. And God took, that God told Abraham to take the substitutionary sacrifice and offer it up in the place of his son Isaac. And that is why Jesus Christ is the substitutionary sacrifice. He is the Eid Mubarak that you look for. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And no other one could pay the penalty to the justice of God, only one who is without sin. And only one who is eternal, so that he might satisfy God for the sins of all people of all time. Yes. And that's why when he went to the cross, he offered himself through the eternal spirit, without spot, unto God. And so the Holy Spirit was involved in the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Father was involved in giving up his only begotten Son, and the Son said, no man takes my life from me. I have the authority to lay it down, and I have the authority to take it up again. So when I come to this wonderful Bible, the Holy Bible, I am one of the proofs of the evidence of the Bible. I am one in whom salvation has had application and it has had authority and power. And every Christian soul here today can testify to the saving power of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is no greater power because the Apostle Paul, when he's writing to the Romans, he said, I am not ashamed of the gospel, the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. And incidentally, these people who are waving a Palestinian flag, I'd just like to tell you, a few years ago, 2018, I had a trip to Israel. And when I was in Israel, we had a tour guide, a, Pal a so-called Palestinian, and he was from Bethlehem. And he took us round Bethlehem. And I asked him, and I said, Please tell me, with all this conflict between the Arabs and the Jews, can you tell me where your family came from? Are you a Palestinian? He said, oh no, there are no more Palestinians. He said, they're all Arabs, and they want another Arab state. And he said, we are right in the middle. He wasn't born again, but he was an Orthodox, he was an Orthodox Christian. And he said, so I said to him, I said to him, where did your family come from? He said, 600 years ago, my family came from Moab, Moab, on the east of Jordan. That's where his family came from. They came from the east of Jordan, where the Moabites and the Ammonites come from. And the Moabites and Ammonites, those of you who know your Bibles, will know that they were the descendants of Lot and his two daughters. They thought the whole world was destroyed, so they thought we've got to make children. And that's why they got their father to be the father of their children. And so his family, this tour guide in Bethlehem, showed us round Bethlehem, but he said, they're all Arabs. And they just want another Arab state. They want to drive Israel into the sea. That's what he told me, and that came from an Arab. I was also watching a cookery program of a so-called Palestinian girl who was cooking, and she was being asked questions. Oh, where do you come from? Oh, how long have you, how long have your Palestinian relatives lived in the land? And you know what she said? Well, there are no more Palestinians. I'm actually cooking an Arab dish because my 
parents are Arab. And so, my friends, there's a lot of political hype over things that are just unreal. And all this conflict over a piece of land, a piece of real estate, is nothing to fight for. Because if you remember what God said to Abraham, he said, Abraham, leave your city, leave your idolatrous city, and I'm going to give you a, a, a city. I'm going to give you an eternal city that has foundations. And Abraham looked for a city whose builder and maker is God. Abraham was not looking for a Middle Eastern city. And in the Bible, we are told that our hope is in the heavenly Jerusalem. And the heavenly Jerusalem are described as a bride coming down out of a heaven who is ready for her consummation with her Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the bride of Christ, the bride of Christ is made up of every born again believer, everyone who has been born of the Holy Spirit, everyone who has been born of the incorruptible Word of God. They are God's children. They're going to live forever. And God's kingdom will never be destroyed. God's kingdom is an everlasting kingdom which can never be destroyed. And that's why we read in Isaiah's prophecy of the increase of his government and of his peace. Speaking of the Son of God, there shall be no end. All other governments have come and gone. All other empires have come and gone. But the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ is an everlasting kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And long after I've gone from this world, if the Lord tarries till then, I know that there will be multitudes who will arise and they will go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Our Lord Jesus Christ, after he had finished the work on earth that the Father gave him to do, after he had finished it, he said after his resurrection, after he rose again from the dead and triumphed over death, he said, all authority in heaven and in earth is given unto me. Go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's why we do it. That's why in the New Testament we read that the people of God, the Christians, they went everywhere preaching and the gospel spread in those first three centuries of AD. You may say, or you may ask the question, why is the Mohammedan religion so strong and so widespread today? Let me explain to you why. And I'm going to turn you to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. People wonder why there's so much Mohammedanism. Well, we are told in 2 Thessalonians 2 that God is sending strong delusion. That is the problem in the world today. There is strong delusion. Hear the word of the Lord. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders 
and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned, who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So, they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And because of that, God sends the delusion. Is the delusion something of man or of God? Not of God. When a nation starts rejecting the Holy Bible, when a nation turns away from the Word of God and turns to religion, turns to some other religion and works, instead of loving the truth that so they might be saved, then they have a strong delusion. That's when the strong delusion comes upon a nation. And here we are told that Satan is coming to fill people with a lie. He's coming with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. They didn't receive the truth which is Jesus Christ in the love of it that they might be saved. Many people might have been professors of Christianity but they did not receive the truth in the love of it that they might be saved. And for this cause God sent strong delusion and the delusion that comes on post-Christian societies and nations, the delusion that is sent, it is sent by God. So what does it mean? It behooves us as Christians to cry to the Lord to have mercy upon our nation. And mercy upon those nations who have not fully heard the word of God. It behooves us to pray because God is an answer in prayer. When I prayed as a Muslim, God never heard my prayer. But when I believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, my prayer was heard. How do I know? Because I called on the name of the Lord to save me. Did Allah save me? No, Allah did not save me. Did any other prophet save me? No. But when I called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ saved me. How do I know? Because I was in a place called Africa, and the African people brought me to Christ. They pointed me to Christ. When I was at my wit's end to know what to do, when I was conscious that my own sin was guilty of the world's inequalities and therefore guilty of the death of Jesus Christ. And I came to know that. And I came to know that I was convicted of sin. And only God the Holy Spirit can convict you of sin. Only He can show you your sinful nature. Otherwise you'll proudly sing that you're better than other people. There are some religions, some religions say that they are the best of all people. Because God says all have sinned, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so there is no one-upmanship in this world. All of us have been given our breath from Adam. So any good thing that a man is capable of doing, whether he be a lawyer or a doctor or a policeman or whatever his position in life may be, is because of the breath of into his nostrils. So all our gifts, they come from God. Man has nothing to boast of. And even in the church, any spiritual gifts that we have, they come from God. So man has nothing to boast about. We boast in Jesus Christ. Let him that glorious glory in the Lord. Let not the wise man glory in his riches. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Neither let the... 
Father, let me rise and glory in his wisdom. But let him that glorious, or let him that boasts, boast in this, God said, that he knows and understands me, that I am the Lord that exercised loving kindness, judgment, and truth in the earth. This is our God. Can you find any to compare with him? Who among the gods is like our God? Who among the gods can do what our God has done? Can their Allah save souls? No. No power at all to save people from their sins. But Jesus Christ is the saviour of the world. He is the king of his people. He is the prophet who teaches us from the Holy Bible. He is the priest who makes sacrifice for us. So Jesus Christ combines the three offices that prophet, priest and king. He alone is worthy of those offices. Not the Pope of Rome, not any other man, but Jesus Christ alone is worthy of all honour and blessing and praise. And I want to thank God for raising up our sister and giving her the boldness to continue to proclaim the unsearchable riches of Christ. May the Lord bless you all. Thank you.